Welcome to Watch Symposium. I'm Austin, and this is a video for David via his wife Leslie. This is David in Spain, and let me just first say, David, this is awesome that Leslie knows enough about your hobbies and your interests to think of this gift idea. This is an anniversary gift. Their uh, anniversary is today, October 6th. Congratulations, guys. But to have a wife that knows about your 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 hobbies and what you view on YouTube and knows enough about you to commission something that she thinks you'd get a kick out of, well, I think that demonstrates a, a good relationship. So uh, I wanted to note that. Now, they're coming to Japan at some point, and Leslie wrote this. So my husband watches your channel every day, and now we are both dreaming about a trip to Japan. Japan's a great place to come to. It's fantastic, such a fun country, so much to see. Safe, blow your mind, a lot to do, a lot to see, a lot of things to eat, drink. Couldn't say enough good things about it. It's kind of expensive, that's the only thing. He's got a nice watch collection, but always loves the hunt. Could you do a custom video about watch shopping in Japan as a tourist? And then she's got some extra questions. Well, before we get to the questions, which we'll do at the end of the video, let's check some things out. All right, David, so you're gonna catch a train or a subway to a station called Nakano, or in Japanese, Nakano. So right behind me, this is our train, so get on it, find a good seat. Hopefully you will be able to find a seat and uh, head to Nakano Station. Nakano. All right, David, you wanna get on and secure your seat. Now, this seat right here, I wouldn't recommend this one because uh, if you wear your watch on your left wrist, that could be very dangerous. You could crack it on that bolt. Much better would be this seat here, but the creme de la creme seats are the corner seats right here. Something right here. Now, would you go for this one? Again, you could hit your watch on this pole right here but right here this is a highly recommended seat All right, David, so this is Nakano Station and you're gonna go to the north exit. Now, David, there are plenty of convenience stores around supermarkets, but Japan is known for its vending machines. And uh, I love vending machine coffee. It's, it's inexpensive, it gives you a shot of caffeine. So this could be uh, a good chance to uh, get all hopped up on uh, caffeine before you uh, head out the north exit and into Nakano Arcade, which you'll see um, black. That's what I recommend. All right, this is the north exit. So just go out one of these gates. All right, so uh, now when you get out of here, you're probably, this guy's probably gonna cost you, he's probably gonna try to talk to you about a meteorite. Uh, dialed uh, GMT, just ignore him, okay? He'll talk for hours about this GMT. What you want to do is you want to go forward right here, okay? Forward into there, okay? You can invite him if you want. I mean, he's a pretty nice guy. All right, so before we go in, uh, let's get a wristwatch check from Marcelo. I'm wearing the Smurf. All right, he's wearing the Smurf today. The meteorite dial is actually being repaired, apparently. So, um, now, we were talking about if you had to choose one watch place to go, where would you go? And this would be my choice. Not gonna, all right? But, hey, man. Hey. hey. Another, hey. another YouTuber here. Yeah. This is Mark like Antimate. <laughs> so, we got we just what? bunches of YouTubers here. No. Got no. cheap one. Hey, it's okay. It's also cool. <laughs> That's, uh, we're making a uh, hey. wristwatch check. Samsung. Right. This is... 
This is the bane of his existence. <laughs> this is, uh, yeah, this is the bane of many people's existence who come to my channel and want to see Rolex watches. So I would choose uh, this place for, for watches, but you would choose Marcelo a different place, right? I would choose actually uh, Shibuya. Shibuya, I've okay. I've been there already twice and I actually like, I'm going to show you some of the two shops okay. that I've been I've there. I've been there uh -huh. once, really good place. That's the place where I found the watch that I'm potentially wanting to buy, but I'm not sure if yeah. it's the same place that we have in mind. Shibuya. They don't yeah. have that many places. shops. Right. <laughs> so Ueno is another place. So Shibuya, Ueno, um, Ginza. Nakano, Genza. There's so many places. So uh, you'll have a lot of choices. But if, if you have to choose just one place, you know, your wife's not going to want to go multiple days while shopping. This is where I would go personally. Yes. All right, so you go into this arcade and you just start walking straight and there are two shops, uh, two shops that you might want to check out, maybe three, but this isn't, this arcade here, it's not where the real great watch shops start. That's later on, okay? Now, you keep walking and up here on the right will, I guess if you're watching this video, it would be your left. Um, is TWC, TWC, the watch company. They specialize in brand new pieces. I mean, that's where you go to flip your watch. And they've got some, some used pieces as well. Kind of expensive, uh, but yeah, pretty popular shop here. I mean, if you're just loaded and you just want the damn piece and you don't want to worry about anything, that's probably where you'd go. All right, so David, when you reach the end of the arcade, there's a watch shop on the left you want to check out. Swiss watch. And then you want to go in here and Nakano Broadway. A lot of watch shops in here. All right, so David, we're in Nakano Broadway. There's a watch shop right behind me. There's another one a little further up. There's uh, one right here. There's some, some others. And this is just the first floor. There's also more on, I want to say it's the second or third floor. All right, David, man, there's a, there's a watch shop behind me. There are two watch shops there. I mean, you can't really throw a Rolex without hitting a watch shop. Okay. Um, there's just tons, and this is the first floor. Uh, there's still the upper floor. I want to say it's the third floor. So. Uh, uh, you can uh, sell your watch behind me and then you can take the money and buy another one at this shop behind me. So just a, a ton, all right? Or one there. Third floor, I'm on the third floor here and a lot of watch shops around here. Now it's kind of interesting because in Japan there will be areas that have a high concentration of like electronic shops or you know certain type of shop and here behind me we've got some um manga shops and uh you've got like you know some manga shops here character shops uh gundam so it's kind of weird that there's a high concentration of these kind of shops as well so uh you know you've got uh, some watch shops behind me so anyway Characters, Gundam, manga, and watches. Uh, so yeah, man, I gotta be honest. I'm David, I'm sick of watches <laughs> because so many on the first floor, uh, just so many, I, I, I have so many watches, I don't even wanna go in here. Got so much footage, more watches than you know what to do with. So hope this helps. That's my recommendation. If you can only spend one day or like a half a day watch shopping, I'd hit Nakano. Now, if you wanted to spend more time watch shopping, there are other areas as some of the guys in that video pointed out. My advice if you ever go to Nakano, don't go to Nakano and say, hmm, I'm gonna get a watch. I don't know what I'm gonna get, but I'm gonna get a watch because you probably will be overwhelmed by the choices out there. The better idea is to have in your mind what you want and say, I would like a 16610, this particular configuration, and then you search the shops for that, you're laser focused, that'd be the way to do it. Now here come the questions. What shopping customs or rules should we know about? 
What tricks or scams should we watch out for? Are there tax discounts? What areas do you recommend for good deals and or interesting discoveries, Rolex or other brands? Okay, so first of all, any customs you need to think about, not really, just be respectful and nice and quiet. That sort of goes for all of Japan. And if you're handling a watch, ask them, can I do this, can I do that? If you are setting a watch and you and you make it go backwards, they might have a fit about that. I had a situation where I was setting a, a 16710 and you can go back, you can jump that local hour hand back, but um, I was chastised for doing that. It was somebody that didn't know better and she was told that don't let the customer go back, it's not good for the watch and, and some watches are like that. But anyway, long story short, uh, just ask, can I wind it? Can I do this? Can I do that? Be nice, quiet, you'll be fine. All right, as far as tricks and scams, there are none really in Japan. Now, I have seen a fake watch, but it wasn't at a watch shop and David is not going to uh, be taken in by, well, it was a BLNR and I think it was four or 5,000. And look, I don't know anything about your husband, but if he knows anything about watches, he would be able to take this watch in his hand and know immediately that it was a fake watch. And again, this wasn't a watch shop. This was a shop selling Chinese goods with like two Rolex watches, okay? So you don't have to worry about that. As far as scams go, they're really none, okay? But the way it goes here is they want a good transaction. They want a win-win scenario. They don't want you being jaded, saying things bad about the shop on social media. They want you to be happy, all right? And they're not gonna try to trick you, okay? Uh, if, if there's anything bad about shopping here, it's that it's expensive, okay? And that accounts for the incredible selection because when things go out the back door in China, in Hong Kong, these developing countries, they make their way here to Japan because people pay top dollar here. So the bad thing about Japan is the price, okay? The prices, the expense of these watches, but the examples are incredible. The, uh, the selection is incredible. Honest, totally honest. You don't have to worry about any sort of scams or anything like that. I would just say, it's not a scam, but just know that they polish the pieces here. And so if you have your eye, David, I'm talking to you now, if you have your eye on a certain piece, know how the lines are supposed to look, all right? Because you might get a piece, you might say, wow, I mean, it's a used piece and it looks brand new. Well, it's been polished. And that might be an okay thing, but the lines might be a little bit off. There might be some rounding where you don't want it. And if you don't know anything about polishing, you might just say, wow, I don't see a scratch on this watch. The previous owner must have just taken great care of it. And uh, wow, what a find. Well, it might've been polished five times. So it's not a scam, but it's just something you need to think about in this country. Um, other things, let's see, uh, you're a tourist, okay? And this is a big one. You don't have to pay sales tax. You need to take your, your uh, passport shopping. Okay, it's 4.45 here. Time for the kids to go home, all right? Playtime at the park is done. Go home, kids. Time for your showers, dinner. Time to do your homework. Okay, anyway, so take your passport and you will not have to pay the sales tax. Sales tax here is 10%. If you don't have your passport with you, uh, you're not gonna be able to prove you're a tourist and uh, you'll have to pay the taxes. Now, are you gonna have to pay the taxes on that piece when you take it back to your home country? That's a great question. I don't know. I mean, I'm pretty sure some people don't, but I'm really honestly not sure about the legalities of that. And I've always wondered that. I mean, if you do pay taxes, for example, if I got a Rolex in the States and I were to bring it here in Japan, uh, would I have to pay the sales tax? I mean, if I paid the sales tax in the States, would I have to? What about if I bought it duty-free? Would I have to claim it. I don't know any of that. All right. So just know that a lot of these shops, particularly in Nakano, will have two prices and one of them's 10% cheaper. That's your price as long as you have your passport. Anything else? Recommendation for good deals. Okay. Don't go to any particular shop. You want to shop around. I mean, you, you don't go to a particular shop here. You 
you look for a particular model at all of the shops and you'll find the deal on a particular piece. Okay, so uh, this particular shop here, A, might have a great deal on a 16710, but their prices on subs for some reason are kind of expensive. You might go next door, subs are pretty well priced, like $1,000 cheaper, but maybe the GMTs aren't. So go for the piece, not the shop. And the last thing, negotiating. Can you negotiate? Not really, it's not a bargaining culture. And likely you'll try to bargain and they'll say, well, you're getting 10% off. You don't have to pay sales tax. That's, that's the bargain you get. And if you push it, well, uh, you're probably not gonna get any more off. But what you probably can get off, depending on the price of the piece, is is like a, like a small amount, like 100 bucks, like 150 bucks. So if you're buying a $10,000 piece, it's kind of strange, but you could probably say, I'll do it for this and, and just knock off $100. And very often they'll take you up on that. And, uh, but not always. I mean, I've, I've, I've tried to buy a $10,000 plus piece for just a $100 discount. I just wanted a, a, a show of good faith. Just uh, give, give me a, just throw me a bone here so we can make a deal. I just want to see you're a cool guy and you want to make a deal. Didn't happen. Wouldn't do it. Uh, said, we don't do uh, bargaining at the shop, period. I walked out. They didn't get a sale. I didn't get that GMT Master 2 Swiss only dial. But anyway, it just goes to show you that um, it depends, okay? I would say that if you if, if you throw out like 500, okay, no. I mean, that ain't gonna happen. Even 200 is pushing it. I would say about 150. In, in my experience, if you, if you throw out 300 or more, it, it's just like, okay, we're kind of done with you. Right. Bottom line, I don't want to belabor this point, and I think I am belaboring this point. Uh, it's not a bargaining culture, but uh, yeah, you save $100 here and there. Anything but, else that I would look for? Well, JDM models, so Japanese domestic model only Rolex watches or, or Seikos, I mean, Grand Seiko, Seikos, those are special. That's the kind of thing you want to look for. You know, the turnograph that uh, they made 300 white dial, 300 black dial with the green accents. Okay, that's one thing. They also came out here with a 36 millimeter black dial Oyster Perpetual 369 dial. And uh, it was it was only in Japan and they, and they only made it for a little while, but then they were like, yeah, this is too much like the Explorer. So let's not do that anymore. You'll see those possibly. It'll be about $14,000 worth it. I don't know. So. There are special pieces here. If you want to go uh, JDM, probably Grand Seiko. Seiko is the way to go. But there are special Rolexes here as well. Um, but above all, I think it's the incredible selection uh, that Japan has to offer and a really great, nice atmosphere, uh, honest buying experience. Just don't have to worry about anything. I mean, if you don't know anything about watches, you're not going to be taken for a ride at, at Nakano, okay? They don't want that. They don't want that kind of reputation. So uh, if you're a knucklehead, David, uh, and you got more money than sense, you'll be taken care of here in Japan, okay? If you got a little bit of sense, you'll be even better. Happy anniversary, guys. David, Leslie, when you come to Japan, I hope you have a great time. Reach out, maybe I can meet up. Maybe I can show you Nakano myself. Take care, thanks for watching. See you next time.